Hey Dan. Hey. Nice to see you. You're my first video of ADC 25. Woohoo! And I saw this question, which is a sort of perennial uh, question and one that's very, uh, you know, very appropriate for this time, particularly at an audio developer conference. Yes, we thought so. <laughs> so, uh, so what does AI mean, music mean for us, or what does it mean for newfangled audio? Um, yeah, it's a good question. I think it's a question that a lot of us should be asking ourselves. Um, because this is amazing new technology that has come out. Generative AI, the ability to generate music, the ability to generate text, um, and how do we use these things uh, to really support human creativity, I think is the challenge that we want to face. Yeah. Um, we were, we're concerned with some of the developments, so well, I'm concerned with some of the developments I've seen about uh, just generating an entire song right away. Yeah. And um, I wanted to make sure that uh, people were still involved in the process, that people are still in the loop, and that the AI is working for us. Yeah, assistive is the sort of key, really, I think, for me, okay. at least, yeah. Assistive generative, it's like, I want it to do the stuff that is boring, or the stuff that's difficult, yeah. not the fun, creative stuff, right? And for us, we, thought we saw an opportunity to do teaching, to have okay. people who didn't know how to use our tools or didn't know how to use music production tools in the first place. Can we use AI in a way that will help them use the tools in a way that's engaging? I think there's a lot of uh, movement in to make sort of things easy for new people. I don't think easy as is important as rewarding and engaging. No, I agree. I mean, I think the, the internet means you can teach yourself stuff, and mm -hmm. it's very rewarding when you learn stuff, yeah. and you kind of go, hey, yeah. even, even if it is how to use AI for your own ends, mm -hmm. that's also teaching yourself how to do something useful, right? Exactly. So um, what we've done is in order to sort of address these concerns, uh, is we're sort of announcing, I guess, a, an SDK for any plugin developer to include into their plugin that allows it to be controlled by a chatbot, basically. Right. So um, I can show that to you if you're yeah, interested. Yeah, sure. OK. So uh, it's, we're calling it Al. Uh, this is our generate plugin. It's a synthesizer. But it has this new button here called Al, which will open up this secondary chat window here. It was important for us that it was a secondary chat window because we wanted to keep the main interface available, the main UI that yeah. whatever developer has created. And the idea here is you can just ask for a sound. You can say, can I have a? Uh, you got to type tense uh, pad sound. And then, it takes a minute. This does uh, run on a server. So, it so it's not local. It's not local. No. We haven't been able to make it work locally. Um, but we kind of, it does take a, a little bit of time. We've struggled with, should we make it fast or should we make it good? And we've decided good is better than fast <laughs> in this instance. Yeah. But the idea here is that it will set all the parameters on the plugin such oh, that. Oh, there, there it went. I just saw something yep, happen. It right. updates the parameters, and then it writes a little description here. So first, it will create the sound, and then it will tell you how it created the sound. And you can actually change how much detail you get from that. So you can Hence get the educational part. Very step-by-step right. -step instructions, or you can just get a quick thing, because we've noticed some users just want to keep moving. And then, so here we are. We are Tense pad sound. And yeah, say, I, I, I'm getting that. There's there's tension. There's a little tension there. And then say we wanted it to be, I don't know, what do you want it to be? Uh, well, maybe could we have some movement? Could yeah. we describe some movement in there? So let's get some. Do you have a particular movement you wanted, or? I guess rhythmic, let's go rhythmic. Okay. That makes it easier to quantify and, and see, isn't it? Rhythmic movement. So? It'll take a minute. Take and a it, minute. It, it'll, uh, it revises the settings, and then it'll explain again. So are you using a specific LLM, or are you just using one of the APIs from? Uh, we're, it's, so it's a bit of a, there's multiple models running at the same time. It's sort of like an agentic thing is the right. scheme, the word that they use. Um, it has, uh, but yes, we're based on some you know, uh, models that run on servers. And then we, there's fine tuning as well. We fine tune models. Right, based so you're on, for specifically. Yeah. Okay, so, so that's something's happened there. Yeah, we've got the new sound. Oh, it's Gavin. It killed our sustain yes. on our pad. That was not. So here's your rhythmic movement. 
There's a little bit of a pulse there. Yeah. Like that. Subtle, I would say, but that's yeah, okay. Yeah, there's a lot of reverb on this pad. <laughs> but there's, uh, yeah, it's routed this um, sequencer to the, to the cutoff frequency. Right, okay. Um, and I can always jump in and just, does it know what you've done? If you then yep. change something, does it go, oh, well, that was a good... Of course. Um, I hope it's not too complimentary. I don't want it to tell me how great uh, I am have, all the time. We have struggled to make it not fawning, but uh, <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it'll, if you want to modify things, it'll actually tell you which things have been modified by the user. Right, and okay. And the biggest part of this that we thought was important was we thought this was cool for our product, but um, we wanted to create it as an SDK that could be incorporated into anyone's plugin. So, how, so presumably what, they just need to describe what all the parameters are and what they do, and yes. then that's like just the, a text file effectively, and then... You actually, it's sort of, uh, for the programmers out there, it uses a declarative sort of schema, similar to how you would define parameters in Juice or something like that. Like a dictionary or something, yeah. You, you sort of, when you define your parameter, you define a secondary parameter for Al. And in there, you describe, yes, exactly what the parameter is meant to do. And then you uh, uh, create some little lambda functions that will attach it to your parameter right. so that you can send the data to the server and get it back from the server. I suppose what I was suggesting is it's not a massive overhead to incorporate something like we've this. We've made it. We've worked really hard to make it very easy because we think it's cool and we want people to use it. And I know I wouldn't use it if it was hard. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, I'm putting my, I'm a musician or a sound designer hat on. Sure. What, doesn't this just cheapen my, uh, my you know, uh, lessen my own uh, experience and skills because it's making it sort of a bit too easy or? I think that the, uh, I would say if you're a professional sound designer and we work with a bunch of those, um, this is cool if, <laughs> so I've had this discussion with some guys that do, you know, sound design for Hollywood stuff. And what they said, I didn't expect them to want it, because frankly, we made it mostly for people learning how to use yeah. music production tools. But what they said was, the great thing about this is it's as it's almost as fast as loading a preset, but it's not a preset. It's like so it's, the it, sound it's, I made. And also, I suppose, if you've got like a massive library of, I don't know, Foley, sound effects, or whatever, and you just want to describe what you're looking for, rather than have to go into tags and a structured search, this mm -hmm. could perhaps send you back something that's going to be unique. That yeah, well, that's the thing. It sends you something unique. We have talked about making it able to load presets. It doesn't currently. Every right. sound it will generate is like a unique sound based on what you asked for. Right. But I suppose, ultimately, you could train it on a bank of presets. Yes. Uh, th that's where things get a little bit more kind of uh, We do. We've actually blurred, spoken to some of the sound designers we work with about that as well, about um, if you release sound banks for synthesizers now, that we might make it so that you can train a model based on the sound, the, the, the presets you've created for that sound bank, and then you can like load that and generate new sounds in the style of a particular sound bank. Um, well, that's where it becomes a little bit blurred, I suppose, to a degree, isn't it? So, yeah, well, it's interesting. You know, these are all just ideas. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is an early. So, um, what other? I mean, how far can you go? I mean, how verbose and how, how kind of uh, how. How descriptive can you be? Can you be very specific? You can be very specific. The one thing I want to remind people is that this is controlling this synthesizer. So sometimes people ask for like a Prophet 5 sound. Yeah, sure. It's so like this isn't a Prophet 5. It's not even a subtractive synth. I can't make that sound. Sure. But um, you can be very specific. You can say, can you route the sequencer pulse output to the cutoff frequency? Or you can say, you know, like we did before, just give me a, give me a, a, a you know, yeah. Okay. I have got, I've got a quote. This is. I, I loved it because when I do, uh, I do like patch flip videos and stuff, and I yeah. really enjoy describing the scene that the patch is. Yeah. It, it maybe sounds like. So I guess the, it, the inverse of this is okay. So make me something that would be suitable for an exciting chase sequence. I. If that's possible. Yeah. Let's do it. I need something for an exciting chase sequence. So that's pretty short. Yeah, that's a pretty short I mean, well, you could write it, but the, it should be able to take quite a bit of text. Um, yeah. I, you know, you could put a novel in there if you wanted, I think. Right. Uh, at, um, but yeah. Interesting. So, I mean, so the idea is then this could work, this doesn't have to be for synthesizers, it could work for compressors, EQs, or whatever. Is exactly. that what you're thinking? Indeed, yeah, um, indeed. So then you would ask it, 
how can I make a, could you do something like I have a bass guitar going into you I, I want it to sound like this thing that I've got in my head or a, 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 a record I like could it can it make that sort of association, or is that...? It, it can. The, the more famous the sound that you're looking for, the more likely it is to be successful. Um, it's interesting. I think of it as actually being sort of almost three levels of abstraction at that point. Right. Uh, the first one is just, can you route this control to this controller? Can you, can you set the modulate, or uh, I don't know, set the pitch the interval to uh, octave? Right. It's easy. Uh, that's easy peasy. The next level of abstraction is this car chase scene sequence right. that we just asked for. Um, and then the third level of abstraction is like, I need the jump, like Van Halen jump sound. Right. Right. And it's like, you, you, every time you're asking the model to do more work and um, you're asking a harder question, it does, and sometimes it can get that right, sometimes it can not be as good at those really high level of abstraction things. We might, we haven't shipped this yet. When we ship it, we might uh, allow people to choose how expensive the model is. Right, so presumably this, something like this, you would need your own kind of account with, I don't know, yes, whoever, will, Anthropic or, or ChatGPT or well, whatever, would, whatever you, or, a, or some other. You actually buy it from us, so. Right, okay, uh, well then you, yeah. Then you, so I, I asked you before we were talking, is essentially this like an MCP server, which is just sort of directing the requests in the most efficient, to the most efficient thing, you know, to, to paste based on the text you input? Sure. Uh, yeah, it's, so the way it runs is it runs locally within the plugin. Um, MCP is model context protocol. That's really for um, uh, just sort of like a standardized layer for uh, different things to talk to each other regarding AI. We're not using MCP in this version. We do have plans for a phase two and a phase three, which I hesitate to get into. Yeah. But um, at those point, uh, we, we probably will be in. Because I suppose the thing is, is when you're talking to a synthesizer, it's a very different, it's a very different sort of set of instructions, I guess, than it is maybe if you're talking to something specific audio processing, like it's a, an optical compressor emulation yeah. and an EQ chain or whatever. Those are very different. Yes. So the integration, <coughs> excuse me, the integration here is done by the developer of the product. Right. So they um, describe the parameters and then uh, if they have tagged presets, there's also an ability for them to upload a data set to our servers and our server will fine tune the model to allow uh, sort of even better understanding of the product. Right, I've got you. Okay, interesting. So, this is now the big reveal. Oh, this is the chase, the, the chase sequence. I hope it worked. A oh, chase scene. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, so that I don't, yeah, no, but I mean, yeah, <laughs> perhaps not. But I mean, in a way. But here's the, here's the redo button right there. Ah, so redo. if you don't like it. You go again. <laughs> but in a way, you only gave it one line. There was no kind of pulsing, tempo-based. Sure, yeah. I so, should have asked for maybe something rhythmic specifically. But I like the idea that it's fallible as well, because then you'll get a happy accident. You won't. Because, yeah. I mean, there's nothing worse than getting the, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking, only not quite as good. We've run into that. Because it's mediocrity then, isn't it? Exactly. So, if it's too literal and gives you exactly what you need, it is kind. it can be boring. You know, this is all new. This is all new to us, and it's new to, I think, everyone, and um, part of it is we're trying to figure out what's the right context for this, but we're really excited that we're going to be releasing it. Yeah, excellent. So where can people find out and keep so up to date with it? And it is not released. This is sort of the announcement, actually. Um, we haven't released it yet. There is owl.audio. Uh, owl.audio. Which is coming soon. If you'd like to learn more, you can put your email address in there, and we'll email you when it's available. Brilliant. Thank you very much. That's okay. AL.audio. AL.audio. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Dan. Right. Thank you.